I'm Ron Kazakowski, owner of Traditional Filipino Weapons. On TraditionalFilipinoWeapons.com, what we have is a lot of Filipino weapons. I mean, we've been doing a lot of research in uh, museums and uh, you know, over the various different islands to try to find all these old-time weapons that are thought to be extinct, and we're bringing them back to life again. All these weapons are of the highest quality and uh, made of 5160 steel and uh, engineered to perfection and uh, you know the hardening and everything all individually handmade not stamped out by machines these are fantastic weapons now what we're doing is we're veering off into other cultures we've got weapons from Nepal from from uh, China from Japan we plan on veering off into many other cultures also so we're going to have something from every culture pretty soon we're just we just keep growing and growing Right now, we're gonna, I'm going to introduce the, the, the Gim uh, sword uh, and, of course, some other ones as well. Uh, I, this, this area is not my area of expertise. I'm mostly, I've, I, I, I basically grew up in Filipino martial arts, but I'm going to have uh, uh, the, one of the guys that teach the Tai Chi at the Practical Self-Defense Training Center in Waterbury, Connecticut. Uh, he's the Tai Chi instructor for this, um, and this is uh, Ken Zaborowski. He's going to explain the Gim Sword, and uh, you'll really like what he knows about this stuff. And good to see you, and take it away. Sure. So this is the traditional Filipino weapons Gim. It's also known as a Chan in northern China. Um, if you get a nice look at that, you see it has a fuller grip. This is going to be very different for any of you who've ever handled a Tai Chi sword. Um, if you're familiar with Wushu, I do that, the blade goes like this. This is a real blade. It's sharp. It's very well balanced. I don't think you'll ever find anything for this quality anywhere. I want you to see the, the craftsmanship on the, the handle. Um, with this kind of weapon, most of the weight is right down here at the bottom, so it makes it very easy to make circling movements. And it's very well balanced for very s slight movement of the hand. You can really move this. This is a little heavier than, than a wushu blade because it's a real thick steel. If you notice, it's got the, the fuller groove down the center. Um, this is not what you're going to normally find anywhere for this kind of blade. So, even if you're just a collector and you really want an excellent example of what this kind of weapon is, this is where you want to go. It's very sharp. Um, these kind of weapons were used for precision. So they're very sharp at the very end. They were used for cutting tendons and slipping in over another person's blade. They're very precision type, type of instrument. So I'm going to show you a few Tai Chi moves in a bit. Um, so hopefully you'll you'll kind of enjoy this weapon. show you a few applications now and we're gonna to have to be careful because this is very sharp um, but so you, you just uh, come in with something okay see how I work my way around the blade and come over the top so when you saw and when I was doing the form all these kind of moves they're kind of you have call a rooftop block I think uh, uh, roof block sometimes. Or umbrella. Or, yeah, umbrella. Yes. So that, that's one of the ideas. Now, if you come in and come to the side and see how I can just get his knee coming around. So one of the things with this is you go for knees, go for hips, 
we go for hands, wrists, elbow, cutting the tendon. Cut the tendon, the limb is useless. So if he comes in, say, come in low. See, I can come in. So if you saw the, these kind of moves where I was coming down, that's what that is, clearing off to the side. And if he comes in, I come in low, clear down to the side, see, and I can use this rolling movement to control the blade. So that's the point of the roll. I'd like to introduce to you uh, Andy DiGiuseppe, who is one of the, uh, the Wing Chun instructors at the uh, Practical Self-Defense Training Center. He's going to show you a lot about the, uh, the butterfly swords, and he's very good at this also. So, uh, take it away, Andy. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. Um, first of all, this is, uh, we're just going to call it a butterfly sword. It goes by many names, but this is the traditional Filipino weapons butterfly sword. If you take a look at it, it's, it's very, very classical to the way Wing Chun uses it. It's, um, you know, two swords fitted together so they would fit in one sheath. Um, this would let you, you know, conceal more weaponry, of course. The monks used to, the Shen Shaolin, the monks used to keep them under their robes, so it was difficult to detect that you had a sword on you. They're ex extremely sharp, super classical to the design. It's got a knuckle guard, very, very sturdy, back hook, and that's used for trapping a blade or getting in close without your hands getting cut. Um, most of what you're going to see from most of the Chinese vendors you find online or in Chinatown uh, martial arts shops, they're very flimsy steel. We've tested them. You start using them, they, they break. They snap. This is one piece all the way through. The handle is, um, I don't know the type of wood, but it's an extremely beautiful, um, deep, dark, hardwood, perfectly machined into the metal. So uh, in a little bit, I'll do a little forms demonstration and a technique demonstration of how these are used. One last point. Classically, they would uh, only, the monk only would sharpen uh, just this little rounded part in the tip. They'd leave all of this dull. And uh, they would do that out of humane reasons. But uh, you'll see that this sword is actually sharpened all the way. If I were ever going to make one of these swords myself, I would sharpen it all the way. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to segment into uh, a forms demo in a little bit. So, thank you. do is I'm going to introduce to you now David Everett who's been in uh, various different Kung Fu styles for a lot of years. He's also the, uh, the photographer for traditional Filipino weapons and does some of the filming. So I'm going to introduce David Everett and he's going to uh, do the Dan Dao. Thank you Dave. So the Dan Dao uh, comes in many shapes and forms. Uh, this particular dandao or broadsword or saber, goes by many names, is the uh, northern style being of a longer blade, somewhat narrower. The uh, southern styles would use shorter, broader blades. Uh, this is also the descendant of what the Chinese called the green dragon, which was a very large, wide uh, broadsword uh, used on both the ends of poles as well as in the hand, much heavier than this. Uh, the nice thing that I find is that this has a, a very thick spine, and while having a thick spine, it still has a good degree of flexibility, which it should have so that it doesn't break when it hits another weapon. Uh, the balance is really nice. If you're used to the uh, lighter, garden variety, uh, chromed practice sabers, this is definitely going to feel heavier and more substantial to you. It's all one piece of steel right up through the pommel pin, and this is attached securely through to the end. There's a hardwood handle, all blued steel hardware. The uh, guard is a traditional design uh, guard, 
Uh, I would say the steel is about a quarter inch thick at the hilt and is distal tapered near the end. And this is the mark of a, a fine handmade weapon as opposed to something that's stamped out. On your stamped out practice weapons, the thickness of the steel is going to be the same all the way through. This is distal tapered. As a gradual taper towards the tip where it needs to be sharper than up near the hilt. The blade, however, is razor sharp all the way through. It's a literally shaving sharp. If you've had a good samurai sword in your hand, a katana, it's very similar to the sharpness of that. The uh, way that this is used is in a slashing motion and around the body, sometimes with two hands. We're going to do a demo uh, with a little bit of uh, cutting later on, as well as um, showing you a form with the Don Dao. Thank you.